Hello, Prachi. Very Hi, good evening. Hi, Tenzin. Hi, thank you for having me. How are you? Absolute delight. How are you? Very well, thank you. Yeah, it's actually a delight having you on the Tenzin show. Likewise. I am so looking forward to unravel your success journey as a writer because, I mean, you are an established um, freelance writer, a lifestyle and fashion writer, and um, your body of work is very riveting. It's very impressive. Uh, you've been feature writing Thank for you. Vogue India, InStyle US, Condé Nast Traveler. So how has this uh, been for you in this industry? So first up, I want to say that it's really interesting being on the other side of the table. I'm normally the one who's doing all the interviewing. So I'm super excited to be here. And um, thank you for that lovely introduction. Um, I'm just going to give you a quick kind of background on my journey. I started writing in 2011. Um, I worked with um, a lifestyle and luxury magazine called L'Officiel for two years before I started to go freelance. I mean, freelancing was kind of never part of the plan. It just happened. I said, let, let me give this a shot. Let me try it out in between, like figuring out what I wanted to do next after my uh, job at L'Officiel. And it kind of just worked out for me. And over the years, it's been about seven years of being a freelance writer now. And I think I've been really lucky to write for some amazing titles and publications like Vogue India, of course, is a dream. Condé Nast Traveler is a dream. I've been um, able to contribute to some international publications as well, like you mentioned in style. Um, I've written a story for Vogue Australia. I've written something for Brides.com. So I think it's been really exciting. Um, mm -hmm. I think the most fulfilling part for me is that um, it's been almost a decade of writing. I don't think I've been bored even a single day on the job, which is why I love doing this so yes. much. Yes, true, because I think uh, most of us, we are like, okay, so when we get that job that we've always dreamt of, you know, the, the perfect career that we've ever wanted right. and wished for in our life, we have it then we don't value it. But there are people like you, I think you have a certain hunger in your belly that keeps you going. Yes? I, I think I would like to say that I'm a little bit intrinsically motivated. But honestly, it, mm -hmm. it's just really something I absolutely enjoy doing. If it was something that I got bored of, or if that didn't excite me to kind of wake up and get to work and get to my laptop every morning, I probably wouldn't still be doing it a decade later. Um, sure. So what's interesting is I never really planned to be a writer. It wasn't some kind of like 10 year plan I mapped out when I was in college. It just kind of happened organically for me. I, I, I almost feel like writing discovered me rather than me discovering writing. So I think, you know, some, okay. sometimes when things are kind of, you know, when you're meant to do something, uh, it just like pans out beautifully for you. True, true. So you say the universe were, you know, casting their shadows on the events that we I would, occurred. I would like to think so, perhaps, yeah. Yes, I think it's if it's meant to be, it will be. Yes, great, fantastic. Now, um, it's interesting because, I mean, I do write articles as well. Correct. And there have been a lot of times, a plethora of them, where I have to write about this particular topic and I go blank. I don't know how to start this. So what is your mental prep zone when you, you know, when you have to write? How mm -hmm. do you start? Um, very interesting question. Um, I, don't, I don't think I have any kind of like ritual. When I have to write a story, mm -hmm. it's, it's almost chaotic uh, to an outsider. But I also like to believe there's a method in that madness, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I think it also sure. comes from like years of having to do it. But I, every time I have um, a topic at hand that I know that I need to write about X, I think my mind kind of, you know, unconsciously just starts churning. And, you know, I always have like a little diary by my bedside. I always like work with, you know, a notepad. And I'm like, I may be like having coffee and like a cool line will come to mind, which I feel like would be a great fit in the story. So I'm all constantly like scribbling these notes, like either on, on my email draft or on, you know, notes on my phone or, you know, whatever paper I have at hand. And I think like when I come, when I sit to kind of just really finally structure the story, it just, it, it flows in a way. But of course, there's always like a lot of like, prep to be done you have to do research oftentimes you know even if it's an op-ed mm -hmm. uh you have to have facts and figures in place so I feel like that kind of just 
some background research kind of just gets your mind churning like the wheels churning for you to be able to write the piece when you actually like get down to it sure absolutely now um since you are a fashion and lifestyle writer you have to i think you have to keep in touch with the constant updation of the trends right isn't that difficult sometimes um in a way yeah of course it's part of the job to be like updated with what's happening uh, not just in the industry in india but also internationally um is it difficult i mean not so much because it's kind of like you know your your mind just gets strange to to think like a writer so you know even when you're say having a conversation with friends or you you know go to a party and see someone wearing something fabulous you your writer's mind is always kind of on It's the blink- always blinkers are enough. always on yeah it's always there's never like an off button there so you know you're having a conversation and then you think like hey like that could be an interesting story or you see somebody wearing something interesting and you're like okay maybe that's picking up as a trend and it's something i could write about so you know i think like when you're a writer and it doesn't necessarily have to be only like fashion or lifestyle or jewelry when you're any kind of writer or when you're um in any form of like journalism i feel your eyes and your mind have to always be active to kind of just pick up cues like what's what's relevant what's happening what's what are people talking about what do people want to talk about so i think that's yes. possibly the key yeah i think you have to keep all your faculties open and active absolutely all the time all the time <laughs> right because i can relate to this the writers that i've come across many of my right. friends they're like right. we have sleepless nights because we have so many string of ideas generating yeah. yeah and if we don't put it down on that piece of paper it bugs us correct yes. uh, which is why I act, so, you know i think way, some of my most sorry i think i just i lost you there for a second there was some network issue yeah. no problem so i was saying uh, prachi that a uh, lot of my friends who are writers they have this string of thoughts string yeah. of ideas and they say if i keep it longer within me and don't put it out on that piece of paper it yeah. bugs me so that yeah. happened with yeah. you as well i actually relate with that um which is why i have my little diary by my bedside because i feel like some of my story ideas the ones i've been most excited to write about will come to mind like right before i'm about to go to sleep and then you're like i have i have to put this down on paper otherwise i'm never going to remember these exact words in the morning or you know you could be like having breakfast and and something hits you or you could be in the middle of a phone conversation and something hits you so yes definitely i fully um kind of relate with that and i think when when it when that kind of an idea comes to you in like all of a sudden in that form it's so important to note it down because those are the pieces that like you would be most excited to write about than something that somebody's asked you to work on you know sure yeah okay great now where does this passion spring from what drives you to write every single day i think uh, you know i haven't really like sat and thought about it up until now but i feel i just really enjoy doing it it gives me a great amount of pleasure i feel it's something i thrive mm-hmm. on you know like uh, doing that research or keeping in tune with what's happening in the industry and i feel like even if one person turns around and tells me that hey i read this piece that you wrote and uh, that was such a great tip or i related with that or i feel the exact same way you know i feel like that i've done some good you know my job here is done even if a few people can relate with what i'm putting out there um so i think a couple of months back i think it was earlier in the lockdown i done the story on um for condenas traveler on on dating uh, for singles during this lockdown and you know what the future okay. possibly holds and um i had so many people just acquaintances message me being like hey you know my friends are sharing this article between themselves and i had to i had to tell you that like we all relate with it so much and while i'd written it from a female perspective there was this um chef from australia who dm me on instagram saying i know you you've written the female point of view but it's exactly how i feel and i relate with that and that kind of just made my day that somebody somebody resonates with you know your words and your thoughts and that's possibly making some amount of difference to their life yes 
because I think it's very easy when we, whenever we have a magazine, newspaper, I think it takes in a lot of effort from writers. Uh, it's, you may see that this is just a piece of paper, but actually it's the sweat there's and so much work that, that you know, this, I think people, um, uh, when, when it comes to fashion or anything in, in the related kind of lifestyle space, people have this mm -hmm. grave misconception that it's only glamorous. But let me yes. tell you, it, it's, 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 not, it's not all, gl all glamour. I mean, honestly, nine times out of 10, I'm in my sweatpants, my hair's like in a top knot, and I'm furiously typing away on my laptop. Um, yes, there are some amount of glamorous perks. There are amazing people that you'll meet. You will learn from like the best in the business. You'll probably go for some amazing shows, but that's just one facet of it. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of uh, behind the scenes. There's there's a lot of like serious hardcore work that goes in. Like fashion is 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 a serious business. Um, yes. You have to see kind of like you know if you ever work with a magazine or newspaper, you have to see the kind of um, again I'd say method in the madness. There's almost like this kind of beautiful chaos that comes together when you're putting like an issue out or a story out. That deadlines to be met. You'd probably be chasing somebody you want to interview for you know, for weeks and weeks and weeks until you actually get that interview. So mm -hmm. it, it's a lot of serious, like, serious, serious work. Yes. Yes, true. Uh, now, did you always want to pursue the niche that you're that you're currently in right now? Writing? Uh, as a curiously child? enough, no. No. I always, I always had an interest in writing. I always had a flair for it. Like, literature was my favorite subject in school. I was always part of my debate team. Um... But I studied advertising. So I went to Xavier's in Bombay, where I where I did a did my graduation in mass media, and I uh, specialized in advertising because back then my view of of journalism was that oh it's it's only serious and you can only do it if you're interested in politics and economics and you know business, which I wasn't. But I happened to, in okay. my final year, chance upon this internship with a fashion and luxury PR firm. And those six months kind of exposed me to this whole like new world of fashion journalism. I'd always been interested in, in fashion, but that was more of a personal interest. Um, mm -hmm. You know, with this, uh, with my internship, one of my, my duties there, one of my roles there was to track coverage for their clients in in like newspapers, magazines, websites. So by default, every month, I was pretty much reading every fashion and lifestyle magazine or newspaper in the country. And that got me exactly. really excited, you know, kind of tracking the style and the voice of a particular publication or, you know, um, thinking of ideas or how I would have probably approached the story or, you know, and then that got me interested in, in exploring journalism. I did some research and this is this is a decade ago. So there wasn't any formal um, fashion education in India unless you wanted to study design. That was the main focus even at a NIFT or in, you know, FID or any of those institutes. So I, I pursued a, an intensive uh, fashion journalism course in London, which was great because it gave me an amazing foundation. It helped me build a portfolio. It helped me kind of understand the behind the scenes of what actually goes into writing even a short like 200 word article so i think i started there uh, so like which is why i said in the beginning i feel like writing happened to me uh, rather than the other way around you know and after i came back coincidence. yeah i mean i think it was just not even a coincidence it was a matter of kind of just discovering you know what you really love to do because while I studied advertising and I always thought that maybe I'll end up in client servicing or you know brand marketing um, I was interested borderline interested in those fields but they didn't excite me as much as writing does right now so you know while I was doing PR and, and I mean a few months into the internship I realized PR is not for me it's not my cup of tea but I think it was a beautiful window and it was like a beautiful bridge for me to kind of reach this other side. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I think it's very uh, important for us to put it in front of the viewers, what uh, Prachi just mentioned. Sometimes we think we're not happy and content with what we have right now, maybe in terms of your career as well, you know, speaking more on that. But I think everything that you do, whenever you think that this is not the ultimate destination, it's just a preparation stage. I think it's just setting the bigger stage for you. So everything Absolutely. that you've done so far is actually 
nothing but experience and experience is knowledge not just theory theory all the yes, time so yes what prachi mentioned is uh, something that has to be um you no know, deep got it to our brain so yeah, i mean you win some or you learn some you know there's there's i mean no knowledge is is lost time as long as you're learning something i think there's always a take away from it yes yes true now um what would be your master advice for aspiring writers trying to really make a mark for themselves in the industry um so first up i would say if you're doing it just because you think it's going to be a super glamorous job and you're going to dress up every day and attend parties and shows and store launches it's really not going to be you know do it for your love of writing do it for your love of the craft like you you need to be really invested in it personally because i feel at the end of the day writing any form of writing is a form of storytelling uh yes. you know as as a as a journalist as a lifestyle journalist i am narrating the views of brands of of you know designers of experts in the field and that's a great responsibility you know you're you're putting out somebody else's views you're putting out somebody's hard work you're putting out somebody's you know life's work out there and it's a great responsibility to be able to present that um, in a respectful manner and in a manner that does it justice and even if it's just your views that you're putting out you have to realize that it has the power to kind of make or break opinion it has the power to shape culture or shape thought so you know do it if you're really passionate about it do it if you're willing to put in the hard work i feel like writing is a great amount of you know work there's a lot of research involved um there's a lot of like investment in terms of time like i said you could you could be chasing a particular designer a particular personality for like for months for weeks before you actually get a chance to interview them so you know just be passionate yeah. i think that's the yes. bottom line yes yeah, so nothing comes easy so i mean yeah, yes so and no but yeah you have to be willing to work at it for sure sure and maybe i think we all think as you know when we were a teenage when i was a teenage i thought everything was easy you know uh, yeah. i stepped into this career and i can get it today so i i don't think any industry is like that whether it's writing or as you mentioned specifically in the industry that you are in you have to be prepared to hear no's and maybe yes. uh, have the patience to wait as well absolutely so be ready to I mean we live yes. in a generation of you know we live in a world of like instant coffee and instant mm -hmm. like you know insta live right. and instagram posts right. yeah we we kind of become used to used to that but we have to realize mm -hmm. that even and especially today like when we see somebody successful on social media that kind of colors our perception a lot we have to realize there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes yeah. there's months if not years of you know work and and long nights put in to get to where they are So definitely anything even if even if it's another field that you're pursuing you have to be willing to put in the work for it. Yes. Everybody starts from from a big zero. Yes. Everybody does. Yeah, everybody starts from ground zero and I think that motivation shouldn't be external gratification at the end of the day if what you do makes you happy. If if you're proud of the body of work you're putting out then whatever field I think that's kind of the goal at the end of the day at least for me. Okay. Now, as you mentioned, you have actually uh, done both social media writing and feature writing, right? So what is the big vivid distinction between the two of them? So, uh, you know, with content writing, it kind of have again, it was it was never the plan to get into content writing. When I started kind of dabbling with freelancing, and this is about 7-8 years ago, I just intrinsically it's like an occupational hazard every time i see something that that's written like a written word then i kind of start to evaluate it and okay. i would look at these that was also the time when like e-commerce was coming up a lot of brands were you know putting out putting up their e-shops or you know i'd see a hoarding or i'd see like a magazine ad and i'd be like hey wait a second like somebody's got to be doing this writing for the brand also right they also possibly need like content writers who can work on this which is how it started and again like another you know tip for anybody who's watching is of uh, with me i have in the beginning possibly reached out to most of the people i work with so when i started freelancing and i'm not even exaggerating i probably sent out like 100 200 mails to editors and brands i thought i wanted to work with not everybody is going to reply but 
a lot of the brands i work with now kind of materialized out of that cold email so to say um okay i think the key difference is when you're feature writing it's really more about your opinion you're either putting you're putting across your thoughts or even if you're writing about somebody else's work it's your take on it but when when you're writing for a br- brand be it for their social media or be it for their website or any kind of like communication or platforms that they have when you're writing for a brand you have to communicate to their voice so even if it's say if it's not not your style you still have to understand what they want to say and what manner do they want to say that in and be able to kind of put their aesthetic and their voice and their personality into into words that kind of do justice to them so i think that mm-hmm. that definitely is the key difference sure because i'm sure uh, even magazines under them they have their own way and format they want you to you know follow absolutely. while you, you know, absolutely right. every, every magazine every every website every paper you write for everybody has their own kind of pre uh, prescribed norms and they all have their own formats they all have their own language like even if you take one common topic let's say you know what to wear for let's let's make it more topical like what to wear for your at home wedding now so this okay. same topic would be would have to be approached in different ways for different publications you know everybody has a different writing style everybody has different kind of prescribed formats word counts what kind of imagery they want um whether they want you to talk to experts in the field whether they want it to be entirely your voice whether they want it to be celebrity driven so you have to understand that and the easiest way to do that is kind of read their past work so every time you're writing for somebody oh. new yeah every time and every time i pitch to a new publication or even if i'm it's for a publication i've been writing for for a long time always keep track of what other content they're putting out there because that gives you a really good understanding of what their readers are seeking and the kind of work that they are commissioning right now so you don't you don't want to send in a piece and get feedback saying that hey you need to rewrite this whole thing you want it to be like spot on and the only way to do that is to do your research and understand where they are coming from mhm so it's very pivotal for us to think from that dimension from the dimension of the publication house or from the place yes. that you're actually offering this writing piece to yes yes does this does all of this actually become a barrier to creativity because i know the writers all different sorts of artists they say you know what the world puts in a lot of boundaries and then that kills our creativity does it happen with you or you're just like okay you know what uh despite all of this i am still you know offering my best content being the most authentic self does it happen or does it get filtered all through yeah the- i think i think you have to find a way to be authentic within the parameters that you know you have to work within if you want to be completely mm-hmm. free of any form of liability or direction then you know by all means start a wordpress blog or you know write on medium nobody is going to kind of edit that for you but if you yes. do want to contribute to um a platform or a you know publication that already has a good readership and you want to reach that kind of an audience then you have to i think you have to respect their parameters and their boundaries as well uh for me i feel Absolutely. i've been lucky like you know so, and sometimes and i was reading this article today uh by another writer who was just talking about how sometimes we don't have control over what we write like we may have to do do a celebrity driven piece for seo purposes because i mean but at the end of the day that's what readers want to read about so right. yeah yeah so i feel like for every you know piece that i may not be 100% invested in i've been lucky enough to also then turn around and write something that i'm really passionate about so it's at the end of the day it's all about balance you know uh, okay. you can you like can start there when you're only routine. writing what you want to write about hmm 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 True. a little bit of compromise is okay yes prachi so i wouldn't even call more... it compromise but you know just um okay. yeah just playing the field okay sounds good uh so what are your principles of success because all the guests that we've had on the tension show have had their own definition their own um you know they can note their own meaning of success because yeah. uh, you know for a few it could mean relationship or a few could mean the money the luxury car anything right so what is your idea of success and what are its principles 
um i think success for me like i said earlier on also it's not about external gratification uh i think if i'm happy and proud of the work i'm putting out there i think that's a big like tick against your success checklist and also okay. being able to you know i approach every story with the th- and even if it's something really simple and quick or if it's something slightly more deeper my my main question when i start writing out writing a story is you know how is this going to add value to somebody's life so if there even a few people who have a kind of positive take away from it whether it helps them decide what they should wear for their wedding or whether it helps them kind of make a decision to make a switch in some form of lifestyle if if my my words and my thoughts are making that kind of positive impact i think that that's really what it is about right and i think the minute i start yeah. the minute i start kind of the minute my work doesn't make me happy i think i would stop doing it so for me success mm-hmm. is also in a way related to like that form of contentment and just joy okay so i think to really sum it up uh, for prachi uh, it is when you offer service through your knowledge whether it's your uh, knowledge in science through journalism whatever profession that you're in uh, i don't i think uh, prachi believes there's no use to that unless you have service mindset unless you serve to other people yes in whatever way you can and um, another thought comes to mind is anything that helps you grow i think while you know as a journalist maybe you know while i'm helping other people uh, become aware of you know trends or lifestyles or concepts at the end of the day i am also learning from that so yes. as You're long as better. yes yes and as long as i am evolving and i'm learning i think you know that's a great value add to me also and i think that's a sign of success also to to be able to grow and kind of just broaden your horizons Certainly, certainly, Prachi. So this was an amazing, incredible session I've had Thank with a you. writer. I think uh, you're the first writer that that has arrived on the Tenzin Show. It was amazing. Thank you so much for having I me. Feel, I could feel that zoosh, that energy, that spark <laughs> from you. I can see that coming, radiating through the screen right now. Thank you Keep so much. Keep that up. We're also proud for what you do and the content you. you offer and the work that you do. Uh thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me. This was a great pleasure and hope you have a good day. Yes, you too. Bye-bye. Enjoy okay. the rain. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care. Bye.